In this video, I'm going to talk about GD&T form tolerances. So there's four form tolerances in the current ASME Y14.5 standard, straightness, flatness, circularity, and cylindricity. And I'll talk about them in order. I'll give you the definitions, show you what they should look like on a drawing, and try to give a couple of examples of what each one is for. So let's dive right into straightness. So straightness does what it says it does. It controls the straightness of line elements. Now, there's two primary ways straightness gets used. It can control the line elements on a surface, whether it's a rectangular part, cylindrical part, or conical part. It can also control the straightness of a derived median line for a cylindrical part. And they're very, two very different meanings, but luckily, they're very distinct on a drawing as to how the feature control frame is applied. So let me give you some examples of each. So on the board are a couple of examples of straightness tolerances applied to different kinds of features. So the first, is the straightness is applied to the top of a rectangular part. So we've got a size dimension that controls the location of the surface, and the straightness tolerance just refines the form of the surface. Now, straightness tolerances only apply in the view you can see. So this tolerance, the straightness, controls these lines in this direction, so parallel to the viewing plane. What that means is that on the right view, so front view, right view, okay, on the side where the straightness doesn't apply, you can use the full size tolerance for that feature. So you can end up with like a corrugated roof shape. So it's got to be straight in this direction, but not in this direction, okay? This can use that full, oh, 80 thousandths of size tolerance. Now, uh, rule number one applies when it's applied to surface entities like this, so that 10 thousandths straightness tolerance can't be any larger than the MMC. So the MMC of this part is 1.04. You can't add the straightness to that to say, you know, oh, it's 1.05, right? It's still gotta be under the MMC, and then you have to uh, achieve that straightness tolerance. Now, there are applications where you could get away with this corrugated, corrugated roof thing. Um, if you needed it to be straight in both directions, right, you would just use a flatness tolerance, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So straightness uh, controls the straightness in one direction only, and it's usually indicated on a drawing like so. On a 3D model, it's gotta be shown with an arrow or something. It's gotta uh, be more clear. In an orthographic projection, it's pretty straightforward. Next up, it can apply to a cylindrical feature. So this is applying the surface applying to the surface elements of a cylinder. This is pretty straightforward to check. You know, you just put it in a V block and run an indicator across. Same thing here, you could just run an indicator across and look at the indicator reading. It applies all the way around the cylinder, but only individual line elements. So you can check one, spin it, check again. You could even shim the part to a degree and check. You only care that the individual line elements are straight. There's no relationship to any of the other line elements on the part. And again, it only applies in this direction, not in this direction. So you could end up with a part like this if it uses its full size tolerance uh, in manufacturing, okay? Next up, it can also apply to conical features. And in this case, inspection-wise, you'd put it on a sign bar in a V-block and then just run an indicator across to see if each individual line element is, in fact, straight, okay? So now, Let's talk about straightness of a derived median line. Okay, if you notice on these, it's leader directed to the surface. It could also be 
attached to the extension line. Right. Notice there's no datum references, and you notice there's no diameter symbol in the feature control frame. Right. When it applies to a derived median line, we're going to write it differently. So let me show you what I mean. So there's a couple key differences in this situation. If you notice, the feature control frame is now attached to the dimension. That's a dead giveaway that applies to the feature of size, not to a surface. Also, we've got a diameter symbol in the feature control frame. This indicates that the tolerance zone is cylindrical. It happens to be in the middle of the part. So this tolerance is telling you that the derived median line of this feature needs to be within a 10 thousandths diameter tolerance zone in the middle of the part. Okay? Very different from surface straightness. And it's written differently. Okay? Another thing, because it's applying to a feature of size, now material condition applies. So this applies at RFS. You have 10 thousandths of tolerance no matter what size the feature comes in at. But if we put an MMC symbol here, Now that tolerance only applies when the feature comes in at its MMC, in this case 1.04. If the feature comes in at 1.00, we'd have 50 thousandths straightness tolerance, okay? So the part can be uh, more bent, the smaller it gets. One thing to notice here is whenever you apply a straightness tolerance to a drive median line, you're giving it more tolerance than you would if you just used uh, plus or minus dimensions. So what it's doing is violating the MMC boundary. If you think about it, if you have a 10 thousandths tolerance zone going through the part right here, so the part comes in at MMC and it can bend 10 thousandths, that means it can take up more than its MMC. It can take up 1.06, right? So it violates MMC. I have a whole nother video that I go into a little bit more detail about this and I'll put a, a card up here so you can watch that if you're interested in the difference between a derived median line and an axis. We'll just go ahead and move on for now for this video. The next tolerance we need to look at is flatness. Flatness is extremely common on drawings because a lot of parts are rectangular and when you use GDNT, you establish datums. Often, they're datum planes. Flatness is used to qualify those datums. So if you've seen my other videos, I've said that datums are places to measure from. You want to make sure your datums are good, clear features, right? They don't need giant form variations that can make measuring difficult. So flatness is often applied to datum features so that you have a good place to measure from. So let's uh, look at flatness. Just like straightness applies in two very different ways. It can apply to the surface of a plane or it can derive, uh, apply to a derived median plane. Luckily, it works a lot like straightness. Let me give you an example. So we've got two examples on the board of flatness tolerances that are applied in different ways. So just like straightness, if flatness is applied with the leader to a surface, it only applies to that surface. So the surface must lie between two parallel planes that are this distance apart. No datum reference, it's an individual feature, so those parallel planes can move around relative to the rest of the part. This is normally checked with the indicator running across the surface, either flipping the part upside down or uh, right side up. Now, I have a whole other video about that. I'll, I'll try to put another card up here. Now, just like straightness, if the flatness is applied to the actual dimension. It means something different. It means it applies to the derived median plane, which just means you have two parallel planes going through the part that the derived median plane of the part should lie in. So what that looks like in practice, if we take an imperfect part and we measure each two points on the outside through the whole uh, length and depth of the part, remember it's a 3D thing, we're just gonna find the middle 
of each of these points, right? So kind of finding the median of the surfaces of the part, the opposing surfaces. Those points must lie with, two, with these two parallel planes in the middle of the part. Now, flatness of derived median plane, I would say, isn't used that often. Uh, if it is used, it'll typically have the MMC modifier. It's a quick way to check like little sheet metal parts, right? You could just drop it in a gauge and make sure it hasn't uh, violated. So in this case, you would check a part with a gauge that's 1.06. As long as it fits through the gauge, you know the flatness tolerance is good, and you just use a two-point check to make sure it's not under size. Okay. Let's move on to circularity tolerances. So in my opinion, circularity is not used as often as flatness or straightness, but it's still out there. So what circularity does is control the circularity, right? So whether a uh, cross section of a circular feature is circular or not. So what do I mean? Circularity tolerance will be applied with a leader line to the surface. And this is the only way it should be applied. Previous versions of the standard, you could put it with the dimension, but that gets confusing because the circularity does not apply to a feature of size. It applies to the surface of the cylinder. So it's saying that at every cross section, right? So say we take a slice right here, we've got two Two concentric rings, that's the tolerance zone, this distance apart radially. So from here to here. And the surface of the part has to lie within those two concentric rings at every cross section. Now, the cross sections should be perpendicular, perpendicular to the axis of the feature. Okay, so this cross section should be perpendicular to this. But Similar to other form tolerances, it only applies to these individual set. There's no uh, requirement for the length of the part to be straight, just that each individual section is circular. So, so you could end up with a part that looks like this, right? The length of the part can use the entire size tolerance so this whole 80 thousandths, so the difference between the high and the low points could be uh, 40 thousandths. So the surface can use the entire tolerance here in this direction, but each, as long as each cross section is circular, the part is considered good to go, okay? So separate checks, a typical way to check this, you put it in a V block, put an indicator on it and rotate it around. Now again, no datum reference, so there's, there's no other features you're checking this to. You're just checking it to itself. Now, you might wonder how could this possibly be acceptable? Well, normally the size tolerance will be pretty small if a circularity is applied. Now, if you wanted to control the straightness of this surface, we would use cylindricity. So let's get into that. Cylindricity controls both the circularity of the feature, each cross section, and the straightness of the whole feature. So or cylindricity is a much more difficult tolerance to inspect and produce, but it gives you more what you're thinking of when you apply a circularity to something, and that it controls the entire feature. Cylindricity can be used for uh, cylinders that are primary datum so you want to make sure your datum surface is nice and straight and circular it's often used for things like hydraulic cylinders that have really exacting tolerances and need to be perfectly straight and circular to function correctly and cylindricity only applies to cylinders whereas circularity can be applied to a conical shape a sphere or a cylindrical shape so that's it for a quick discussion of the four form tolerances. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe and check out the channel for more GD&T videos coming soon.